Sweet Claire and the Freedom Quilt by Deborah Hopkinson, paintings by James Ransom. Before I was even 12 years old, I got sent from North Forum to Home Plantation because they needed another field hand. When I got there, I cried so much. They thought I was never going to eat or drink again. I didn't want to leave my mom. I'm going back to her, I whispered every day to young Jack, who worked beside me in the fields. Well, you better start eating all you can, sweet Claire. He smiled at me, but his, then his smile was gone. In a low voice, he say, or else you won't make it. Young Jack helped me believe I'd get back to my mom someday. Truth was, I'd be lost before I got through the fields. Them being so big and all, but I didn't give up dreaming. Aunt Rachel was raising me now. She wasn't my for real blood aunt, but she did her best to care for me. One night she came back from working in the big house and found me lying dead tired on the cabin floor. She shook her head and said, Sweet Claire, you ain't gonna last in these fields, but I got an idea. Aunt Rachel's idea was sewing. She started teaching me the very next night. It wasn't easy for me to learn. My hands already rough and clumsy from hoeing in weeding the fields, so Aunt Rachel took it real slow. She brought scraps of cloth from the big house and taught me about each one, how it was special, had to be treated in its own way. I like to piece the scraps together to make pretty patterns of colors, Aunt, but Aunt Rachel didn't care much about pretty patterns. Now you rip out that whole row and do it again, Claire, she say. Why I gotta make these stitches so tiny, I complain. You gonna be real seamstress, that's why. Tomorrow you coming with me to the big house. I got it all worked out, Aunt Rachel said one day. I was frightened. You ready to sew with me, she went on. Mrs. Daughter Ella be getting married come spring. I told Mrs. I'd be help needing help. She looked at your work with sharp eye, Claire. So do it quick and neat like I taught you. Next morning I tried to eat some cornbread, but my insides was all knotted up. I never been inside the big house before, or seeing white people that close, except the overseer. The morning sun was streaming into the sewing room, turning everything all sunflower yellow, and Rachel gave me some sheets to hang. Instead of being contrary, that needle did all I wanted, just like it was part of my hand. At the end of the day, Mrs. came in. Let me see your work, Claire, she said. I gave her the sheet, and she ran it through her hands real slow. I held my breath watching. From now on, come here, she say last. When she left, Aunt Rachel and I looked at each other, about ready to burst. We done it, girl, she cried. So I changed from a field hand to a seamstress. Since the sewing room was right off the kitchen, Aunt Rachel and I were near cook and helpers. There was always lots of bustles and company in the kitchen. I was hearing all kinds of new places and things. I listened so hard it felt like my ears must be growing right out of my head and getting big with listening. One day, two white men come to see the master. The drivers went into the kitchen to talk to the cook. There have been too many runaways last summer, one of the drivers said. They gonna run. They go around asking all the masters in the country to join the payroll. Crazy, running away, murdered the cook as she beat up some batter. Where you gonna get to, Sep, lost in a swamp? Don't know, said the other, but I hear we ain't that far from the Ohio River. Once you get that far, the Underground Railroad will carry you the rest. That's right, agreed the first. The railroad will get you all the way to Canada. Then you free forever. Cook snorted, if it be as easy as you to let on more wood go. One of the men replied in a quiet voice, It'd be easy if you could get a map. Walking back from the big house that evening, I asked Aunt Rachel about what I heard. Where's Canada and where, what's the Underground Railroad? See there, Aunt Rachel pointed. That's the North Star. Under the star, far up north, is Canada. The Underground Railroad is people who've been helping folks get there, secret-like. She looked at me hard, but you... Don't start thinking about it. You run away and get caught, you be beaten. Still, I couldn't stop thinking about it. Next day, I asked the cook. Those two men that were here yesterday, they was talking about a map. What's a map? Just a picture of the land, that's all. What's ever on the ground, a map can have it. Sunday, I went to my favorite place on the little hill and looked out at the people's cabins and fields. 
I took a stick and started making a picture in the dirt of all I could see. But how could I make a picture of the things far away that I couldn't see? And how could I make a map that wouldn't be washed away by the rain? A map that would show the way to freedom. Then one day I was sewing a patch on the pretty blue blanket. The patch looked just the same shape as the cow pond near the cabins. The little stitches looked like a patch going all around it. Here it was, a picture that wouldn't wash away, a map. So I started the quilt. When you sew in, no matter how careful you be, little scraps of cloth always be left after you cut out of dress or pillowcase. So while my ears kept listening and my hands kept sewing, I began to squirrel away these bits of cloth. When we was off work, I went to visit people in the quarters. I started asking what bills was were. Then I started piecing the scraps of cloth with the scraps of things I was learning. And Rachel say, Sweet Claire, what kind of pattern are you making in that quilt? Ain't no pattern I ever seen. I don't know, Aunt Rachel. I'm just patching it together as I go. She looked at me long, but she just nodded. There was a buzzing in the quarters one summer evening. I saw the payrolls, and I knew someone had run away. It was young Jack. The five days later, they caught him. The next Sunday, I went to see him, and we walked to the top of the hill. He didn't smile the way he used to. I took a stick and began to draw in the dirt. I drew a square of a big house, a line of boxes for the cabins of the quarters, and some bigger squares for the fields east of the big house. I drew as much as I pieced together. Jack sat beside me, not saying anything, not even looking at first. Then he started seeing what I was doing. I handed him the stick. I hear him catch his breath up quick. Then he began to draw. I worked on the quilt for a long time. Sometimes months would go by and I wouldn't get any piece so in it. Sometimes I had to wait to get the right kind of cloth. I had blue calico, flowered blue silk for creeks and rivers, and green and blue greens for fields, and white sheeting for roads. Mrs. liked to wear pink a lot, so Big House, the quarters, and finally the Big House of North Forum, they was all pink. The quilt got bigger and bigger, and if folks knew what I was doing, no one said. But they came by the sewing room to pass the time of the day whenever they could. By the way, Claire, a driver might tell me, I heard the master saying yesterday he didn't want to travel to Mrs. Morris's place because it's over 20 miles north over here. Or someone could send him, sit eating cook's food and say, so as I could hear, where is they going to plant corn in the three west fields on Vernon Plantation this year. When the master went out hunting, Cook's husband was the guy. He came back and said, The swamp next to home plantation is a nasty place. But listen up, Claire. I'll tell you how I threaded my way in and out of there as smooth as your needle in that cloth. Then one night, a quilt, and one night the quilt was done. I looked at, at it, spread it out in the dim light of the cabin. Aunt Rachel studied it for a long time. She touched the stitches slightly. Her fingers moved slowly over the, over the last piece. I added a hidden boat that would carry us across the Ohio River. Finally, then, then came the rest of the bright stars on, on, at the top. I tried to make her voice cheery. You sh also did like the make parts, no, the, I'm sorry. You also did like the to make patterns to, in pictures, Carolyn. Carla. You you get you get yourself married to young Jack one of these days, and you take and you two will have a really nice quilt to, to sleep under. Aunt Rachel, I can sleep under this quilt. I answered softly, putting my hands over hers. Wouldn't be restful somehow. Anyway, I think it should stay here. Maybe others can use it. And Rachel sighed. But ain't you gonna need the quilt? Where are you going? I kissed her. Don't worry, Aunt Rachel. I got the memory of it in my head. It rained hard for three days the next week. Me and Jack left home plantation in the dark thunderstorm. The day after, it was too stormy to work in the field, so Jack wasn't missed, and Aunt Rachel told them I was sick. We went north, following the trail of Freedom Quilt. All the things people told me about, all the tiny stitches I took, now I could see real things. There was the old tree struck down by lightning, the winding road near the creek, 
their hunting path through the swamps. It was like being in a dream you already dreamed. Mostly, we hid during the day and walked at night. When we got to North Farm, Jack slipped in through the darkness to find what cabin my mom at. Then we went in to get her and found a little sister I didn't even know I had. Mama was so surprised. Sweet Claire, you grow so big, her eyes just like I remember, her arms strung around me. Mama, I'm here for you. We're going north. We know the way. I was afraid they wouldn't come, but then Mama said yes. Young Jack carried my sister Anna, and I held on to Mama's hand. We kept on as fast as we could, skirting farms and towns and making our way through the woods. At last, one clear dark night, we come to the Ohio River. The river was high, but I remembered the place on the quilt where I had marked the crossing. We searched the brush along the banks until at last we found the little boat. This was hid here by the folks in the Underground Railroad, I said. The boat carried us across the dark, deep water to the other side. Shivering and hungry and scared, we stood looking ahead. Which way now, Jack asked me. I pointed the North Star was shining clear above us, up there through the woods, north to Canada. Sometimes I think back to the night we left, when young Jack came to wake me. I still see Aunt Rachel sitting up in her bed. She just shook her head before I could say a word. Before you go, just cover me up with your quilt, sweet Clara, she say. I'm too old to walk, but not too old to dream. And I may be, I can help others follow the quilt to freedom. And Rachel kept her word. The quilt is there still at home plantation. People go look at it, even folks from neighborhood forms. I know because some of them come and tell me how they use it to get free, but not all are as lucky as we are, and most never can come. Sometimes I wish I could sew a quilt that would spread over the whole land and the people just follow the stitches to freedom, as easy as taking a Sunday walk.